Hello, I'm Dr. Bethke. I am a soils researcher and technical consultant in the growing media industry. I've done this for nearly 60 years now, and I am having such a wonderful time working with Pet Moss. It's the most exciting product I've ever worked with. Well, I grew up in uh, Western Michigan on a family farm. At eight years old, I started uh, doing experiments with soil. My dad had a greenhouse, and so I did that in my own bedroom. And then I, uh, as I grew up, I worked in the greenhouse, went to Michigan State, the University of Missouri. After that, I ran my own family greenhouse business and farm with my family members. And then uh, went back and got my doctorate in, in soils and plant physiology. Then I was technical director for a peat company for 13 years doing independent consulting and now uh, nearly 60 years later I'm just having a ball with this new innovation. I was so excited about pit moss because over all the years all the different things I've worked with in soils and peat and uh, core different materials pit moss has this great ability to absorb water hold water, deliver water to the plant in a, a plant available fashion. It also has large enough pore spaces that the water does not hold in those large pore spaces, but we have air as well. So we end up with this great combination of air and water holding, and its great property is that it's pH neutral, so we don't have to do a lot to adjust the pH, and we can just blend it in with any substrate, anything we work with, and it works well, it helps to deliver the water. We can put nutrients in it, fertilizer, etc., and it will give it back to the plant. It does not uh, have a waste problem, it's a recycled product, so I just think it's the modern thing. It's the next generation in growing media and potting soils. Well, as I mentioned, it does, it's got a neutral pH, which means that it'll blend with just about anything. Uh, it doesn't have any toxic substances. It absorbs nutrients well and delivers them back to the plant. Uh, it doesn't carry with it a problem where you have to put in a lot of lime or additives to make it work. Because if you have to add a lot, then it makes it more difficult to, to uh, blend into a, any kind of a growing media. You can mix this with anything you have and it'll help to, when you put the fertilizer or the nutrients, it'll deliver it back to the plant. First of all, it has a good absorbing ability. So if you add a little too much of something, it'll absorb it or it'll take it away. But yet you don't have to add a lot of things. It is naturally neutral. And so you're not required to make a lot of adjustments. You don't have to add lime, you don't have to add uh, certain kinds of fertilizers. If you want to add nutrients, you can. And then uh, it also is absorbent. So if you happen to add too much of something, it'll absorb some of that and then hold it and deliver it back to the plant at a time it needs. Well, it's made from recycled paper. Re recycled cellulose material is a natural product to start with. Uh, rather than putting it in the landfill or rather than choking up our garbage and waste system with something, we put it to good use. And, and so the, the modern world, we want to have good stewardship of what's going on. We have, want to make sure that people use the, the materials we have wisely. And yet it comes from plant fiber itself because that's where cellulose comes from originally. It's also reproduced uh, uh, naturally just by growth of trees or by growth of, of even sugar cane or uh, corn stalks all have cellulose in them. So it, it's reproducing itself all the time. Uh, we happen to use newspaper at the present time because that's a good cellulosic material, but we can also use other cellulosic materials to make similar products. Back when I was born and did the work on the family farm, at that time, soils were being made by collecting field soil and adding things to the field soil or garden soil to make a growing media, something that would work well. We would add various components and blend them in. And then in the uh, about the 1960s or so, um, 
the peat moss came on the scene where we ended, blended in sphagnum, perlite, and vermiculite, and then uh, we, we, that was the era of living better through chemistry. So we added fertilizers and other chemicals to the blend to make a good, what we called peat light mix. And that was the standard of the industry until a few years ago. Now that we're developing technology on recycling of cellulosic materials and recycling of waste products and uh, altering naturally reproduced uh, cellulosic materials, we can uh, make substrates now that uh, materials that'll grow plants very well from these cellulosic materials. So we're beginning on the new cycle. First we had field soil, then we had sphagnum peat based blends, and now we're beginning on the cellulosic based blend uh, applications to the industry. Well, the, the brilliance of the inventor of pit moss, Mon Hanley, was to uh, take these cellulosic fibers out of paper, rip them all apart, and then re-blend them together in little pillows, little, little particles. These little particles are made from these little fibers. These little fibers then uh, hold the water, very much like if you took your, uh, a dishcloth made out of cotton, how well that holds water and then it, their fibers are knitted together in chunks and so those chunks fit together in the soil to keep air spaces there as well. So we end up with more water holding within the fiber and more air between the fibers. Uh, it's far superior to anything I've ever worked with in my 60 years of soil experimentation. Okay, a soil amendment is something that we add to the soil or a potting amendment we add to potting soil. Uh, it's something that changes the nature of the blend. If we add uh, sand to a blend, it would be considered an amendment. Or if we add perlite to a blend or sphagnum to a blend, it would be an amendment. And then the blend itself is the composite, the components that we put together to make uh, an excellent mix in our mind and it does what we want it to do. Pit moss by itself is an amendment uh, and it can be used in blends and it's an amendment that holds more water so it increases the water reserve, the resilience against uh, wilting and uh, the decreases the frequency of watering, water, water, less water runoff. It also then fluffs up the, the blend to give it more air. So you have the little particles that hold the water and the spaces between the particles that give it air and in the blend that improves the blend. You can add it to nearly any existing blend because of its neutral chemistry. Now, pit moss performance is a blend and it's considered a blend because it has nutrients added to it and it's ready to use as is. It's been uh, fortified to, to create a, the best uh, uh, possible growing environment in pure pit moss. Now, pit moss performance in itself holds so much water that you want to recognize that growing in it, you want to water less. You want to expect to water less. Yes, you can overwater. If, you, if you're used to watering your plants very frequently with pit moss, there's enough air in there that it's not a severe concern. You can keep it on the wet side. But I would suggest if you want the best and most vigorous plants, the design of the fibers is such that you should keep it on the dry side because they will prosper well. Also, because it delivers the water as the plant gets more thirsty, it will tolerate drier side growing better. So you can reserve water. Well, uh, growing them in containers is one thing. In the garden, if you add it to the garden, it's gonna increase the fluffiness, the tilth, and the, the texture of your soil so it'll absorb water more effectively. Uh, that's a really excellent application. We found a few other interesting applications in composting. If you blend it in with the compost, it absorbs some of the excess moisture and also provides carbon to a lot of the, the nitrogen-rich compost materials.